Good evening, and thank you for having me here tonight. While this is my first visit to Australia, after seeing your beautiful city and seeing what friendly and gracious people you are, I'm sure that this will not be my last visit to Australia. If you want to understand the difficult tasks that IDF officers must face, understand that I am speaking after Colonel. <laughs> I was born and grew up in New York, so I apologize that my English is not the Queen's English. And when you add 26 years of military service, speaking in Hebrew, using military jargon on top of that, I hope you will have no problem understanding my English. This is a little known fact, but during the Cold War, scientists came to the Premier of Russia, the President of the United States, and the Prime Minister of Israel, and informed them that they had discovered that life on Earth would end in two weeks' time. The Russian Premier gathered his advisors, and in true Soviet fashion, told them of the impending disaster and, they, and that they must find a way to tell, not tell the people to keep this information secret. The U.S. President gathered his cabinet and after informing them of the news, told them that since the people have the right to know, they must formulate a plan that would inform the public but minimize despair and lawlessness. The Israeli Prime Minister gathered the, his cabinet and told them, we have two weeks to figure out how to live on the moon. <laughs> While obviously a joke, the underlying premise is what most of us would call the Jewish or Israeli view of thinking outside of the box, not giving up, and of course, Israeli ingenuity. Colonel Kemp has mentioned how our basic belief in the importance of any human life has led the IDF to think out of the box and to come up with some ingenious solutions on how to operate in a way that saves lives, sometimes at greater risk to our own soldiers. The Colonel has been a consistent friend of Israel and he focuses on our actions to protect lives of others. And we in the IDF thank him for being a strong advocate for us and our actions. While the Colonel focuses on our efforts to protect the lives of others, I want to speak now about our efforts to protect our citizens, regardless of their religion. Following the first Gulf War in 1991, the Home Front Command was created as part of the IDF. As a military command, the Home Front Command is unique in that most civil defense agencies around the world are not in the military. The Home Front Command's mission is to prepare the civilian population to deal with emergency situations and ensure what is called societal resilience, the ability of society to weather difficulties and to continue and operate in what we in the Home Front Command call an emergency routine. I will go a little more into details about this in a few moments, but part of the way that the Home Front Command ensures a resilient society is through the partnerships it maintains. Partnerships with the Israeli police and Magenda Viradom, partnerships with the national and local governments, and partnerships with NGOs such as UIA that due to their flexibility as non-governmental -gov agencies can speedily assist the local population in time of need. In some cases, resilience means adapting and changing the way we look at and deal with emergency events, or sometimes even everyday events. Most of you are here tonight with your spouses, and if you get an invitation to go to a wedding or some other event, you don't usually think twice about going as a couple. While that seems perfectly normal to you, that isn't the normal response for thousands of Israeli residents. I have a friend, an officer who served with me and lives with his family near Gaza, who told me, it has been years since he and his wife have gone together to a family simcha. They just don't trust that a 13 or 14 year old babysitter will hear an alert and within 15 seconds get all three of their children into the protected space. So one parent always stays home with the kids. Also, while if you have three kids that need to go to school in the morning, 
You pack them all into the car and make one trip to the school. Not so for my friend and his wife. They make three separate trips back and forth to the school because if all three kids are in the car at the same time and the alert goes off, they have only 15 seconds to pull over and cover one of the three children with their body. Would you be able to pick which child to protect and which two you trust in God to protect? In order to ensure that the population is prepared, the Home Front Command has developed what is called the Protection Package, which is made up of a number of factors. Education and training, exercises that include the population, physical protective needs like the shelters we've heard about, early warning when an incident occurs, and specific guidance that we give the public during an event. One of the first changes made after the Home Front Command was established was legislation requiring that all new construction in Israel include the building of protected spaces in every apartment or home and on every floor in public buildings. However, this law was not enacted retroactively so that buildings constructed prior to 1992 did not have to be upgraded. When I talk about early warning, I'm sure that most of you are aware that in the southern part of Israel, closest to Gaza, there was only 15 seconds of warning time between the detection of a rocket launch and the time of impact. This is the time that the public has to react and find the nearest appropriate shelter. When you heard of the choice my friend and hundreds of parents like him must make, I'm sure that you understand the priority we as parents, uh, that we as parents place on ensuring that our children are safe and protected, especially when they are out of our immediate care, when they are at kindergarten or school. When I was growing up in New York, my parents raised me to believe that Israel is the home of the Jewish people. If we don't have that home, another Holocaust is possible, and that if we want our own state, we need to be willing to make personal sacrifices and, de and defend the country and our people. As an officer in the IDF, I spent 26 years missing my kids' birthdays, missing parent-teacher night at school, missing Shabbat meals with my family, and doing other assignments that the IDF felt necessary in order to protect and save Israeli lives and Jewish lives around the world. I know that through the UIA, your community has assisted in purchasing and supplying hundreds of shelters that are responsible for saving untold numbers of lives in Israel. As an officer in the IDF who has risked my life to protect Israelis, I see us as partners in this endeavor, and I salute you for all that you have done to save lives. It is important to understand that the threat that the population needs to be prepared for can happen at any moment. And therefore, the connection between the government, be it the Home Front Command or other government agencies, is ongoing. However, when a flare-up of violence occurs, obviously the connection intensifies and becomes much closer. During one of the recent flare-ups, where 45 salvos of rockets a day were hitting the southern part of Israel, the Home Front Command, along with members of local municipal governments, went door to door to ensure the residents understood the guidance that was being supplied them and to check if there were any gaps. On the third day of the operation, one such team went to an elderly woman and she told them that she was hard of hearing. Due to her disability, she was unable to hear the sirens, basically letting us know that while our over 100 rockets had targeted her area, she wasn't going into a shelter, which she did have. The team made sure she was supplied a beeper that is connected to the early warning system and vibrates when the alert goes off. By the way, in addition to other projects, UIA has been responsible for supplying a number of these beepers to the population. So again, hats off for the lives you has, have saved. And if you doubt that this simple purchase by the UIA saves lives, later that same evening, the woman I just told you about was sitting in her living room watching the evening news when the alert sounded. This time, due to the beeper vibrating, she knew that she had to go to a shelter, and within 15 seconds time frame, she did. While she was in her protected space, 
One of the rockets impacted in her living room between the couch she had been sitting on and her TV. So that beeper, together with the protected space that she had in her home, undoubtedly saved her life. The point I want to make from these stories I've told you is very simple. Academic studies have proven that when the population has all of the parts of the protection package, including the protected spaces, and the follow the guidelines provided them, it saves lives. Before I came here to Melbourne, I went down south in Israel and met with Schuster, the head of the local council in this video at the end, and with Gilad, one of the kindergarten teachers in the video. Gilad showed me the protected space and told me how there was room for only one third of the kids in his kindergarten. He spoke about the added stress on the children who during this summer's conflict were dispersed between different kindergartens instead of being with their friends and regular staff. They both asked me to pass on their appreciation for everything that you have done in the past to help save lives in their area of Israel. And Gilad hopes that in any future conflict, he will be able to have all of his children together in their regular kindergarten due to your generous contribution of sufficient protective spaces for all the kids. By the way, Gilad never mentioned to me space for him or the other staff. His only concern was for the kids. When talking with me, both the head of the council and Gilad stressed that in order for life to continue and flourish in the area, the first necessity is that parents feel their children are safe. This isn't a luxury, this is a basic need. My friends, please take a little longer than the 15 seconds that the residents of southern Israel have to find shelter as you consider the amount of tonight's donation. And whatever you were thinking to give tonight, please consider to increase your donation. Remember that what you give will literally be saving lives in Israel. In deference to Colonel Kemp's call to arms, we have added a donation option this year and will be accepting three-year enlistments to the IDF. <laughs> Can I now please ask the table captains to distribute the pledge forms to the guests on your tables and we'll give you a few moments to fill in your donations. I thank you in the name of the head of the regional council, in the name of the residents of southern Israel, and as a 26-year veteran of the IDF, I personally thank you for participating with me in protecting Israeli lives. Thank you. <laughs>